It was named after a grandfather. It had an A on it. I dropped the A. It was a man's world. I was perfectly happy to confuse the, <laughs> the issue. <laughs> Michael Zakin was a free spirit in the 1940s, a sculptor and a jeweler. But in the 1950s, Michael chose the traditional path of marriage and children. As life would have it, though, a second act was in store. I was living then here in Closter, New Jersey, and I took the babies up to Sebago Lake to swim. The littlest one was still in a, in a, in a, in a, in a basket. And I, I saw a sign on the road, Gate Hill Community Road, that said Potter. And I crossed a bridge over a little stream, and it was a real crossing point in my life. It was Michael's introduction to Clay and to the well-known potter Karen Carnes, who became her mentor and good friend. Many years later, Michael reached another crossing point when her husband became permanently disabled. I was driving a school bus at the time. To put, I was earning $60 a week, which in 1970 you could feed a family for a week on, on, on $60, $65. That's what I was doing at the time, and I didn't know what I was going to do next. I couldn't leave because my husband was really bedridden at the time. Her friend Karen was there to help out, getting Michael her first job teaching pottery at the Brooklyn Museum. A big change for her probably was beginning to teach herself. You know, it sort of really freed her, and she has such a good mind. She began studying everything and knowing everything. Michael became a master teacher, able to convey her love of clay to others. It's really epic. I mean, you're working with the bones of the earth that have dissolved in a way. I mean, rock that has dissolved over time. And you are, with fire, turning it back into a rock-like state. And when you're doing this, you're also in touch with all the work that was done before, all the thinking that's registered in clay, you know, all the people who solved life problems all the spiritual thinking that was expressed in imagery and clay, everything. Michael Zagan became known for her unique salt-glazed pottery. She had developed her own vocabulary of form. You know, this was once flat. This was a flat sheet of clay, and I had been reading about earth tectonics, clay, and how the earth moves, and I was moving the surface of the, of the clay, and it began to rise in ridges and stuff, and I, you know, really organic, interesting forms. They began to look like insect forms or something. They began to suggest something, and you can really trace, you can trace that it was flat, and it's all folded, and right. I think she took a really original step in the way she enclosed space with her slab work and distorted it and pushed it. And she still is working in the same way, just using different ideas. You know, the person she is now is more of a product of the last 20 or 30 years than what she was when she was a young woman. Her next step took her to an abandoned old church. I was driving to Brooklyn and passing that empty building down the road that I began to have fantasies of Look at that empty building, a carpenter's gothic, beautiful architecture. It's boarded up, it's been boarded up for 15 years. Why can't we have community right here? Her fantasy became a reality. 30 years later, the Old Church Cultural Center is a full art school with close to 800 students, and it plays a vital part in the community. We ran the first after-school program for severely disabled children, neurologically disabled children. Somebody walked in, a mother walked in, and said, would you ever? And part of the dream of the center was that it would not be one person's ego manifestation. It would be always loose enough so that we could, be, we could listen to the community need and respond. And then her remarkable energy and curiosity took Michael on yet another adventure. And I thought I would like to travel with a focus, and there must be other people like me. And that's when I dreamt of traveling seminars. She began with a trip to study pre-Roman pottery in England. Later trips took her around the globe. She even co-directed a documentary, The Working Processes of Korean Potters. There's been a lot of chance, a lot of, but isn't that everybody's life? If you're not all set on a track like a train, 
you know, you, you can respond. I had very good fortune.